A fiery horse with the speed of light. A cloud of dust and a hearty high yo silver. The Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the masked rider of the plains fought crime and criminals throughout the early western United States. No one could match his courage, strength, or daring, and the stories of his deeds have come down to us through the generations. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear and relive one of his most thrilling adventures. In the cafe at Cooperstown, a stranger stood just within the swinging doors. He was slim, seemingly relaxed, but it might have been noted that both his hands remained within inches of his two holsters. His small eyes, cold and observant, carefully searched the crowd. When they found young Jim Plummer, owner of the Gold Flat stage line, they paused. Jim was standing alone, and the stranger immediately pushed his way toward him. Here's a chance. Let me buy. Here's a Howdy. Huh? Oh, howdy, stranger. Ain't you Jim Plummer? Uh-huh. But I don't I see... I guess it. you don't know me. I'm Speed Fletcher. Hmm. Glad to know you, Speed. You wanted to see me? Well, I was in Washoe City and mentioned I was coming this way. Judd Phelps said he was a friend of yours and for me to look you up. Well, I should say so. Judd's one of the finest friends I got. If he sent you, Speed, you must be all right. <laughs> What's your fancy? Like to paint the town red, or would you like... Say, to... where'd you get that gun? Huh? Oh, this one? I'd recognize that shooting iron anywhere, Jim. That used to belong to me. Lost it a year well, back, and now doggone me if I don't find it clear over here. Somebody sell it to you? Well, you must have made a mistake, Speed. Shucks, I've had this here iron for five years or more. You don't say. With a handle mark just like mine. Any objection if I look at it? Why, of course not. Draw on me, will you? What? Take it. Oh, my hand. Grab the fella. Hang on to him. He drew on me. I was just protecting myself. You fellas must have seen it. I wasn't at fault. You can explain that later. Stand back, folks. Jim's wounded. Don't crowd. Stand back there. Looks like Jim's hurt bad. Uh, is he breathing? Can't hardly tell. Oh, how bad hurt is he, Bill? One moment. Yeah, bad enough. He's unconscious. Won't be able to tell much more later. You there. What started this? Gosh, I don't know. I went over and introduced myself to him, and I'd hardly got a, a word out of my mouth before he slapped leather. Golly, the only thing I can think of is that he must have mistook me for someone else. I, I wouldn't have had this happen for anything. I don't believe it. The stranger's telling it straight, Bill. Seen it myself. I couldn't hear what was said, but I seen Jim draw. Oh, shucks, Bill. This army's a stranger, and we all think a heap of Jim. But you know yourself he's telling it straight. You must have seen it. Why was you shot the gun out of his hand almost before he drilled Jim? I don't believe Jim would have drawn without more cause. But you did see him drawing me first, didn't you? You can't say I started it. Don't leave town. I don't figure Not to. until Jim's had a chance to tell his side of the story. If he ever can. Oh, oh, hurt, huh? Bill, you, you don't figure Jim's hit bad enough to, to die, do you? That remains to be seen, Happy. 
All right, men. Give me room to lift him. I'm taking him home. Although he was known to the citizens of Cooperstown as Wild Bill Riley, it was, in fact, the Lone Ranger who carried his young friend to the small cottage where he lived with his mother. A doctor was immediately summoned, and when he had concluded his examination, he gravely shook his head. Looks bad. Mighty bad. <laughs> Don't take on, man. Even the doc can't tell for sure this early. Ain't that so, Doc? I'm sorry, Bill, but... You mean you don't give him no hope at all? Well, there's always hope. But I wouldn't put Jim's chances at being much better than one in a hundred. I hate to say it like this. But I reckon it's best to know the facts right off. Then it don't come so hard later on. I see. You'll do your best for my son, won't you, Ned? Oh, why, of course I will. Jim's all I got left. There, there. <laughs> Reckon I'm just a blundering old fool of a sawbones talking plain the way I did. I never did have no sense. <laughs> but if you get to feeling too down, Mum, just remember this. I've been treating your boy for things that have ailed him ever since he was a youngster. And if some of the doses I made him swallow weren't the death of him, why, bullets don't stand no show. <laughs> Oh, Jim. You've done all you can for now? Uh-huh. All except probe for the bullet. But that better be left till later. Very well. Just follow the directions I give you, and I'll look in again towards evening. You'll get good care. Well, good day to you. I'll be back as soon as I can, ma'am. Thank you. Mrs. Plummer. Yes, Bill? I'm sending for a friend. A friend who can save your son if there's the least chance for him. A doctor from somewhere to help. Not a doctor. Well, then. An Indian, ma'am. A redskin I'd trust before anyone if I was in Jim's fix. He's faithful and patient, and he knows things about healing that some doctors don't. Oh, Bill, if you'd get him, if you only would. I will. You'll be here tonight. Bill. Yes? I think... I think I'd like you to know how I feel about you. About what you've done for my boy and me. Now, ma'am, I know you don't want to oh, talk. Please let me. I've had it in mind for so long and never said anything. Now I think it's the time to say it. But I don't Bill, want... my boy sets a lot of store in that masked man that helped him out. But you, Bill, you've done so much. I think you're a finer man than even the Lone Ranger. <laughs> Away from town and north to the forest, the Lone Ranger raced. Deep within the forest, Tonto greeted his white friend and listened briefly to the Lone Ranger's story. Then hastily he saddled, mounted, and started back the way his friend had come. Then, in the small hours of the morning... Oh, well... Well, hello. He's come too. Him better now. Your Tonto. Uh. Say, what, what's going on? Molly, you've been crying. Oh, Jim. Jim, we didn't know if you'd ever talk again. Uh. <laughs> Ray, it'd be powerful hard to stop me from that. Jim. Uh, oh, I didn't notice you there, Bill. Listen to me. Don't try to talk more than's necessary. You had a fever there for a bit, and you were saying things without knowing it. I've got a notion what you said was pretty near the truth of what happened in the cafe. I can't... Now, according to what you were saying, this fellow's speed made you draw by a trick, pretending to be friendly and asked to see your gun. When you started to reach for it, drilled you. That how it was? That's it, Bill, but, but I don't know why. I, I've never even seen the fellow before. I watched him draw, Jim. He didn't draw like a cowhand. If I ain't mistaken, that fellow's a hired killer. But why... And that being the case, there ain't but one man in town that'd hire him. Lamont of the Transcontinental Pacific. He's still bound to have your stage line. Well, he won't get it. Now, it stands to reason, as smart as Lamont is, that he won't show his hand if he thinks Speed didn't get you. Particularly, he won't let on that there's any connection between him and Speed. That sounds likely. But on the other hand, if Speed had done what he set out to do, it wouldn't be so needful for Lamont to be overly careful. You'd have been out of the way, Jim, and you're the only one could tell the truth. Bill, you, you've got something up your sleeve. Well, it's just a thought. You've had right good ones before. If Doc Bender was a real good friend, I got a scheme that could work. Bill, 
You tell us what it is, and if I think well of it, Ned Bender will do what we ask, or I'll lambaste him till he'll surely wish I had. <laughs> and, ma'am, I'd suggest that Tonto keep on tending Jim, but without folks knowing. Uh huh. Well, in the meantime, we put on the fanciest and most convincing burying party Cooperstown ever seen. Huh? It'd be right interesting to see what Lamont would do if he thought poor Jim died before he could even speak a word. The next morning, Doc Bender's face was mournful as he spread the news that... Honest fellas, I don't know when anything ever hit me so hard... There he was, white as a sheet all through the night, never opening his eyes, never uttering a sound, and his heart getting feebler and feebler till, well, till it just up and stopped beating. Well, that's the way it is, here today and gone tomorrow. Gosh, I, I bet Ma Plummer took on something terrible. Not like you'd think, Happy. She's a brave woman. And so he died without even coming to. That made it seem worse somehow. Doc. Yeah? When, when's the funeral to be? For land's sake, I was near forgetting. It won't be public, boys. Just for those that gets invites. But I meant to say it'd be real nice if you all dropped over to give Ma a word of cheer. <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> Take it easy, Lamont. I got good news. There's nothing more to worry about. You mean... What you're hoping, I mean. Jim Plummer's cashed in. <laughs> cashed in. Never once come to to tell his story. You better make sure of that. I did. I just came from the cafe. Doc Bender himself told it. No. It's a fact. Then... Then it worked. Sure. <laughs> How are people acting toward you? They ain't friendly, but there's been no lynch talk. They still figure I fired in self-defense. Fine. Well, you've done your work, Speed. I'll pay you off. Here. This is the amount we agreed on. You'd better leave town. Thanks. Uh -huh. I think I'd better. It's a fact, like I said. I ain't heard talk of a hanging party, but I'm free to declare I'll feel a sight easier with plenty miles between me and here. Before you start, eh? <laughs> why not find a way to show more plumber how bad you feel? Huh? <laughs> Let her know how sorry you are it had to happen. <laughs> me? Sorry? And I got 500 for doing it? <laughs> Lamont, that's the best one yet. <laughs> Speed Fletcher swiftly completed preparations for his departure and an hour later rode the length of Cooperstown heading for the South Trail. He was still within the town limits when he heard a galloping horse approach from behind and... What in place? Poor boy. Oh, boy. Well, see, you got your war bag packed. What if I have? Figure you was going someplace? Any objection, mister? You're staying on for a spell. Mister, you got in a lucky shot once, but don't go overrating yourself. I'm Speed Fletcher. Sure, I know. You don't, or you wouldn't get so careless. Too bad you ain't acquainted over in the panhandle. Folks know me over there and stay out of my path. I've been in the panhandle. I've heard of you. Yeah? You've got yourself a reputation for being as cowardly a killer as Texas ever knew. Why, you blame fool, you aim to commit suicide? You're crazy enough to think you got a chance to outdraw me? Didn't you see me beat Plummer to it even when he had a head start? Turn back. You go to... Or break. slap leather. You ask for it. <coughs> oh, my hand. You smashed my hand. Turn up, Birch. You throw for the other gun, you'll get the same. You've had fool luck twice. Turn back or I'll try my luck a third time. I wouldn't... You aim to draw? I... It's plain to see you don't. On your way. Blast you, I ain't done. You ain't finished with me. Just wait, I'll catch you. Good <laughs> trail, Bill. Ever see anybody to put out? Come on, Scout, come on. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
to continue our story. Speed Fletcher, forced to remain in Cooperstown, hastened back to Lamont's office and angrily told what had occurred. Lamont, what in blazes am I going to do? I want to get out of this town, and the sooner I see the last of it, the better. So Bill Riley had a faster draw than you, huh? Luck, that's all. I doubt it. I bet he couldn't outdraw me again. I'd like to wager he could. Huh? I thought you hired me because I was the fastest man on a draw you could find. You are, with one exception. If this here Wild Bill's a blamed fast, why ain't I never heard of him? I think you have. Not to my recollection. Only you've heard of him under another name. Yeah? The Lone Ranger. The... What's that? I think you understood me. Now listen, Lamont, you're loco. The Lone Ranger don't talk like Wild Bill does. The Lone Ranger's all us masked. He rides a white horse and this hombre's riding a paint. You're mixed up somewhere. As for the mask, I have reason to believe he simply disguised himself. A clever man could easily assume a western dialect and the paint. Well, I also have reason to believe it belongs to an Indian friend of his. In that case, it's probable the Indian has the white horse you mentioned. And I went up again him. Lamont, why didn't you tell me this before? Why'd you keep it from me? If I'd known the Lone Ranger was in on this deal, I'd have stayed out. You've answered your own question. Huh? As you say, you wouldn't have hired out to me if you'd known you were opposing the Lone Ranger. Well, I needed you. So naturally, I kept some of the facts to myself. And now here I am, and he won't even let me leave town. Don't get so excited. He hasn't anything on you. He can suspect what he wants to. With Jim Plummer dead, a thousand suspicions won't boil down to one thing that could be proved. Yeah. Yeah, maybe so. Get yourself a room at the hotel and forget about it. Look here, Lamont. If you're so blame sure Wild Bill is just a lone ranger in disguise, why don't you show him up? That shouldn't be hard to do. I've got the sense to leave well enough alone. What do you gain by it? You know his reputation. He fights outlaws, criminals, injustice. I'm here to serve the interests of my company, Transcontinental and Pacific. We have to get more plumber stage line. It possesses the franchise to carry United States mail between Cooperstown and Gold Flats. Since the canyon trail was wiped out, our coaches must go through Gold Flats to reach Washoe City. But from here to Gold Flats, we can't carry one ounce of mail. So that's what's at the bottom of this. Yes, and in the meantime, I don't propose to have Transcontinental associated with criminals in the minds of the people around here by exposing the Lone Ranger. What are you going to do? With Jim dead, I think my task is just about accomplished. Managing a stage line isn't a woman's job. It should be easy to persuade Ma Plummer to sell. And in the meantime, what about me? You? With a Lone Ranger riding herd on me. Oh, that. Well, sit tight and say nothing. You're safe enough. Yeah? Well, that's just what I ain't so doggone sure of. While Speed Fletcher, fearing to make another attempt to leave town, sulked and grew increasingly nervous, Lamont calmly waited the proper time for his next move. It came one afternoon when Ma Plummer was supervising the activity at the headquarters of the Gold Flats stage line. A coach was just arriving from Gold Flats, and she was outside to greet it. Well, Yes, you, Pete, help unhitch them horses. Yeah, Clem, right. tell Pedro I want him here right away. Yeah, Keeping busy, I see. Huh? Oh, howdy, Mr. Lamont. Eight passengers. That's good business. You want something? I'd like a talk if you're not too busy. Sure, sure. I reckon I can be spared. Uh, never mind, Pedro. Get back to the stables. Yes, uh, better go inside where we can hear ourselves think. If you please. Come on. I suppose you find managing your line quite a task. Mr. Lamont, it's something fierce. Oh, you wouldn't believe how tired a body can get after a day down here. Have a chair, Mr. Lamont. If you're anywhere near as tired as I am, it must be almost wore out. <laughs> a man's better fitted for this kind of thing, Mrs. Plummer. Running a stage line is quite a task. That's not work for a woman. My, but ain't it true, though? Land's sakes, I used to sort of scold a Jim and tell him what he done wasn't near so tiring as tending house all day. I've surely learned different since this poor Jim has on. Well, it ain't for me to burden others with my troubles. What was it you come for? <laughs> you lead me to believe my purpose will be welcome. Huh? 
I suppose you know the Transcontinental has been interested for some time in acquiring this property. Uh-huh. Seems like Jim might have mentioned it once or twice. But I'm such a foolish body about business and never paid much attention. Oh, of course, your line itself has no value for us. We have coaches, stations, and equipment of our own. It, uh, it just so happens that we could use one or two things that go with your line. Oh, uh, you must mean a mail franchise. Uh, yes. You come to make me an offer? Why, yes. How much? Hmm, let me see. Mrs. Plummer, I like your frankness. How does $30,000 sound to you? Oh, my. 30000 mm, Yes. But I never had the slightest notion Jim had done so well. Now, you ain't taking pity on me because I'm all alone in the world, are you, Mr. Lamont? I wouldn't want you to cheat yourself now. <laughs> no. No, I think that's a fair price. And, of course, it's not my money, you know. It's Transcontinental's. Though, as general superintendent, I have the authority to spend it for the purpose. In fact, that's why I first came here. Why? Why, that's so much more cash than I ever figured the line was worth. I don't see why I can't give him an answer right now. You accept? When you're so generous? Why, I surely couldn't think of refusing. Splendid. Well, what do I do now? You give me the cash and I just walk out? <laughs> Nothing so simple as that, Mrs. Plummer. But we'll make it as easy for you as we can. I'll have my lawyer call on you, uh, Mr. Judson. You know him? Oh, yes. They say he's a mighty fine man. Uh, I'll have him here as soon as possible, if you'll excuse me. Oh, my sakes, yes. Perhaps Judson will be here this afternoon. Well, now, that'll be just grand. Oh, uh, by the way, Mrs. Plummer. Yes? Uh, if I were you, I don't think I'd discuss this deal with anyone else first. Uh, uh, business, you know... Understand? Understand? <laughs> Don't I, though? Then good day, ma'am, for now. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> oh, my. that all? Is that the last thing I have to sign? Uh, you've already signed the bill of sale, ma'am. This is the deed. Yes, this is all. Now we'll have these witnessed and the deed recorded, and I think the transaction will be finished. <laughs> and Mrs. Plummer, I want to congratulate you on a very fine bargain. <laughs> a very fine bargain. my property now. Get out. All of you. Clear out of this office. Yes, to say. Come on. You brought speed here to drill Jim Plummer. You wanted Jim out of the way so she could buy out the stage line cheap. Nonsense. You go on making those charges and I'll see you jailed. What's it all about, Bill? Quiet, folks. Just quiet down. You'll hear all that's to be heard. By what right do you, you come You keep here? still, too. Now then, men... You just now heard me say Speed Fletcher here was hired by Lamont to kill Jim Plummer. Well, that's the fact, and I can prove it. You can't do no such thing. I'll prove it by the man you shot. That's a good one. All right, Tonto. Open the back door. What? Speed, take a look at me. Take a good, long look. Quiet down, everybody. You may come back from the dead or anything. Just keep quiet and listen, and you'll get the whole truth. Where did that man come from? Tell him, Jim. Folks, all this was Bill's idea. We just pretended I was dead so that we could find out what Lamont's game was. Why, well, you Let can't... Jim talk or I'll gag you. All right, go ahead. I'm sorry we had to fool you folks the way we did to catch the coyote, but well, we're both apologizing for that and hope you won't hold it against us. We're too doggone glad to see you alive. Yes, sir, <laughs> we are. Oh, uh, thanks, folks, thanks. Now I'll tell you just what happened there in the cafe. Those of you that saw it figured I'd draw it on speed and he'd had to fire to save himself. Well, that weren't so. He tricked me into starting to hand of my gun. Then he drew and fired and, because you couldn't hear what had been said, you couldn't know the truth of it. He ought to be hung. That's a yellow killer's trail. Wait, 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 wait,
he didn't kill Jim, so he ain't got a hanging coming. But maybe a lesson wouldn't hurt him none. Fire and feather! Yeah. Yeah. Right no! No, don't tell me! No! Come on, wait! No, 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 no. Come on, no, no, no. Come on, but if Jim's alive, I've been tricked. Uh, you thought you were taking advantage of a foolish old woman that didn't know no better, didn't you? Figured to cheat me and make yourself out real free-handed at the same time. You've got to give me back that money. You got that cash under false pretenses. The deed to the land was a quit claim deed. A quit claim deed doesn't guarantee the seller holds title. You bought the land owned by the stage land at your own risk. And your own greed made you go through the deal before taking time to investigate. But but the bill of sale for the equipment... was made out for everything I own. Didn't list the things you was buying. It was just a blanket agreement. I still don't see why well, you... Well, so if you want to collect, you can have what you really bought. Just the things that was my own property. I own some nice gingham aprons that'd look right fine on you. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> and a taffeta dress that's most wore out. An old hairbrush. And a few other odds and ends like them. <laughs> I've been cheated. This will never hold up in court. I'll sue. I'll I don't sue. think you will. Why won't I? Because if you do, I reckon we won't have such a hard time tying you up with speed. Likely you'd go to prison. And right now, I'm willing to bet speed would be real glad to confess to anything. Just to get out of being tarred and feathered. You can't do this to me. Ain't some folks hard to convince, though. Here it's already been done. It says it can't be. <laughs> but I... Hold on. You just the same as Rob Transcontinental of $30,000. Jim doesn't want the money. No, and I ain't keeping it. Then what are you but going your to... your company's getting it back on just two conditions. First, you're going to be fired, Lamont. And second, you're going to stay fired. And if you ever show your face around this part of the country again, you'll get tar from the same bucket that's being slapped on speed right now. And, Mr. Lamont, maybe this will teach you not to be in such an all-fired hurry to take advantage of a lady. The story you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. <laughs> <laughs>